So thank you very much for coming along to webinar today. So we're going to talk about the new Digimap pilot collection, which was launched last week. Um, the structure of what we're going to see today is here. I'm just going to run through a little bit about the purpose of the collection, why we've done it, how you get access to it, if you're students. And then the main part will be a, a sort of live demo. We'll run through the pilot roam and pilot download applications, looking at the different data sets that we've got from a company called Geomni and some satellite data. And then at the very end, we'll do a quick roundup of some of the other recent changes that we've made over the recent months. So uh, it should last around half an hour. Um, and like I say, please ask questions as we go through. So just a little bit about the background here. So here at Adina, we're always trying to improve uh, Digimap for the, for the users, for, for you guys out there. And we're always looking to add new data sets to the system. We didn't really have a mechanism that allowed us to add new data sets on a sort of temporary basis to the system to get some feedback. So what we've done is we've created this new collection, which we've called the pilot collection. So it's where we can pilot new data sets. And it allows us to put data sets in and take them out and gather feedback from the community. So really we're using this as like a test bed to gauge some feedback for how useful data sets might be to the academic community. And potentially, if they are useful, if we get lots of feedback saying, oh, this is great, then we'll build them into new collections or add them to existing collections. So really, this is a mechanism for us to gauge feedback and for you to see different data sets and use those different data sets. So just be aware that the data will change over time. So the current data sets we've got in there, we've got them until the end of July. So our license uh, allows us to, to use this information up to the end of July, so the current academic year. Uh, after that, they, they will come out and other data sets will, will go in and you can uh, provide feedback on those. So if you're doing research that obviously extends beyond July, then you shouldn't rely on these data sets being available beyond that current end date. Um, if you do need to use that data beyond that, then the best thing to do is get in touch with us. So get in touch via the Digimap help desk and we will, uh, we will advise accordingly depending on your requirements. Okay, so moving on. So access, how do you access the new collection? So we've already had quite a lot of users access it, over a, I've got about 1,500 users have accessed it um, so far across different institutions around the country. Um, it is free to access this new collection, so there's no, no additional payment, no additional subscription required. Um, all institutions that currently subscribe to any of the Digimap collection got access to the new pilot collection automatically. The only thing that uh, that is required is that all users need to accept the end user license agreement. So we've got a different end user license agreement for this collection because it's got different data sets in it. But just like the other collections, first time a user goes in and wants to access it, they need to agree to the end user license agreement. When we change data in this collection, we will need to update that uh, that user, the end user license agreement. It will change and then users will, will be required to re-accept the new one uh, if they go in when the data sets. So, just to show you that, I'm going to come out of PowerPoint and I will go into Digimap. So, I'm logged into Digimap. We've got a new pilot collection. The button's on the right-hand side of the top of our button bar here. And we've got our pilot room and download clients. In the middle, we've got the sort of standard information. We've got some links to some of the help pages and some different bits of information. But if you try and access one of these when you're not, you've not agreed to the license agreement, you'll get taken to the license agreements page. And it just exists sort of towards the bottom of the list. We've got our pilot collection here. We've got the end user license agreement, which you should read, and then the user needs to accept. I'll give that a reason, and that allows me now activated the collection, and I can just go in, and I'm just gonna go straight into pilot room. So obviously, you know, we like to do things consistently, so it's uh, for Pilot Roam, it uses our standard Roam client. We've got a number of the sort of core functions available in here, so it looks just the same as all of our other collections. The key difference is this panel on the left-hand side. When you go in, it will automatically open up, and the, the data sets that are available in the Pilot collection will be listed in this panel. This is effectively our overlays panel, but we've slightly adjusted it, and we've renamed it to this pilot data sets so you can see what's available. We've got two different types of data, two different sort of collections of data available here at the moment. One called Geomni, so Geomni are a data provider here in, uh, in Great Britain. And the second one is the satellite data. 
So we're going to look at the Geomni data first, but the key thing to know is next to each one, each collection of data, it tells you when it's available till. So this data is free up until the end of July this year, in the current academic year. Now the different data sets are listed down the left-hand side here. You'll see uh, only one of them is active at the moment. We've got scale dependency set up, just like in our other collections, but you can only see the data at scale that it's appropriate for. Um, and we're just going to run through these. So I'll start at the top. So for UK buildings, I'm going to zoom into York. Now let's just zoom to York. There we go. So we've just got a standard OS on the survey base map on here, grayscale base map, and you can fade it in and out using the transparency slider at the top there. And I'm just going to turn the UK buildings data set on. Okay, I'll just fade the backdrop a bit because it makes it quite hard to see some of the lighter shaded buildings in the outskirts here. So we'll leave it slightly faded. There we go. So UK buildings. Um, oh, before we just go into specifics, so each data set down the left hand side you can expand using this drop down arrow and when you do that you get, uh, you'll see a new transparency slider so you can fade each one of these layers on and off. We've got a little description about the data and a link to the uh, data providers page about this information, so the official information sources and then below that we've got our legend as well. So. This data set is uh, the UK Buildings data set. Um, is a key data set uh, that's got various bits of information in it, and we're, we're displaying it twice here. So we've got one data set called UK Buildings, but we're showing two of the main characteristics, which are use and age. So the use uh, attribute on this data classifies the different building types, depending on uh, this legend on the left-hand side here, into these different categories. So we've got lots of, um, a couple of residential categories, we've got lots of commercial categories. Um, this is really useful information if you're doing studies and types of buildings around the country. Um, obviously we've got detailed building data from on the survey already in Digimap, but it doesn't contain uh, building use information on it. So there is no information to tell you if it's a transport building or a residential building. Uh, you can obviously look at the colours and see what they are on the map but we've also got our feature information tool here. So if you click on the feature information tool and then you click on a particular feature in the map, you can see what it is. So this is a religious building, so that could be a church or something like that. If we click on this orange one up here, these are health buildings. So these orange buildings are, are health-related buildings. Uh, blue ones, I think. Uh, oops. And me, let's get that back. Blue ones are transport related. And what's these purple ones? So offices, things like that. So we've got lots of different information on these buildings. And it's all it's all displayed there. So we're displaying the the use information through that representation, and we've also got building age information as well. So if I turn on the building age, again it's the same data set. Uh, but this time it's using the age attribute to display the data, and, and let's just play the backdrop right on. So the idea is just set up a very simple, simple cross scheme. So the darker the building, the more recent it is. So this is the age attribute that's in the data. So if we click on our feature, is a dark blue one. This is a modern building. If we click on a, a much lighter building here, we've got um, a big stage part historic. Um, there are some temporary buildings, so there's little orange ones down here. This, I think this is a temporary building near a hospital. Um, it's just past a temporary building. So yeah, so that's uh, another attribute that's in the data. Again, really, really useful because that's not available through on the survey data at the moment. So it would be it's a, it's a very nice addition to the, to the data. Now, one thing to note is here, I'm looking at York, so the city centre of York. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see the colours uh, are not really visible on the outskirts. If we just zoom in, the data is, is really good in urban areas, but in, in rural areas, it's not so good in terms of the, the use and age. So I understand the data is, is updated and it will get better over time, but for urban areas, then the data is the data's very complete at the moment, but for rural areas, better. So, might be something to look at if your study is in a mix of rural and urban areas. So that's the UK Buildings data set. It's a data set that covers the whole of Great Britain. It doesn't include Northern Ireland. It's a Great Britain only coverage. 
Um, yeah, so I just can turn that one off, and we're going to put the UK LAN data set on. Now, the UK LAN data set is a raster data set that covers the whole of, of UK. So we've got Great Britain, and we've got data from Northern Ireland here. So I'm just going to zoom in to Cambridge. Just off right. So this, yeah, like I say, it's a raster data set, um, and it's it's basically a data set that, uh, that classifies the land use across the country into 30 different classes. Now, the legend's not visible for this one at the moment. Um, we are, we're going to add this. It should appear very soon, but uh, the 30 different classes that, uh, that the data is classified into are shown here. So it's similar to the land cover map data that you get environment to do that but it uses a different classification scheme so in terms of uh, urban areas and um, there's lots more classification types and the land cover map data from the environment agency sorry from um, the center for ecology and hydrology um, the urban areas is classified as one one type of, of, uh, of cover so it's just classed as urban areas whereas here we've got a variety of different uh, urban area classification, so depending on the density of buildings, urban centres, things like that. So just to look at this data, uh, if we use the feature information tool, click on the city centre, we've got a, a type of urban centre, mainly commercial and residential. If we go out a little bit, we've got um, one. this one, we've got high density residential, we've obviously got parks, so recreation land, these are the parks in the centre of Cambridge. We've got woodland types as well, deciduous woodland, there's water features, and there's transport as well. So the grey ring road around here, principal transport. So yeah, really nice data set, covers the whole of, whole of Great Britain and uh, Northern Ireland into 30 different classes as, as shown on that page there. And we'll add that legend in, hopefully next week it should be there as well. So that's the UK land data. Um, Moving on now, the, the final one is this UK map data. Now, the UK map data, here we've got four different representations of it, four different components. This data is actually only visible for London. So um, it's quite detailed data, and I'm just going to zoom to our first code in London. So this is in uh, Wimbledon. I'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, find it. Tennis course, there we go. So you'll see now these layers have become active. So even though when we're zoomed out, the data is available for this area, but because it's quite detailed, we've put scale dependency on. So you have to be zoomed in quite far till you can see it. So the first one I'm going to start with is just the one that's called UK Map at the bottom here. So all these are one product. It's all one data set, but there's different components of it. So this one is what we're sort of calling the base map, UK Map base map. And it's similar to OS Master Map in that it's sort of detailed polygon data set. Um, it's got building outlines, different feature types. We can click on these with the information tool and see we've got tennis courts, and here we've got a golf club, we've got buildings as well with some heights, some of the different components. So there's lots of lots of attributes in this information. If we expand the panel on the left hand side you can see how we've classified the data using those attributes into different types of feature yeah it's a very rich data set it was designed and built to be played around one to a thousand so like you say it's sort of similar to our master map um yeah it's a, it's a it's a nice nice data set but it's only available for london uh, this one so that's the sort of what we call the base map version of it there are other sort of components of this data so the aerial imagery is a uh, is a nice one i'm just going to make that fully opaque so we don't see the base up below it so let's just zoom in let's zoom in down here so this data so it's aerial imagery um it was published in 2017 so we don't have actual capture dates for individual tiles on this so you can't access it through the information like you can in the aerial collection but the data um, was captured up to 2017, effectively. So yeah, here we've got a, a very nice detailed bit of photography of the car park. You can make out the white lines and the arrows and the cars. Um, the data is actually very good in terms of its resolution. Each pixel is 10 centimeters. So this is a 10 centimeter resolution imagery data set. The data in aerial Digimap is 25 centimeters. 
so it's obviously not as detailed, but this is this is very detailed indeed. You can make out the white lines a lot clearer. And in terms of in terms of dates, like I say, this was captured uh, or published, sorry, in 2017. But we can tell from this image because in Wimbledon they they put the year on the hill, uh, so this was obviously captured in 2016. And uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, it's reasonably up to date, I think, um, and it's it's nicely detailed as well. So that's the aerial imagery. The upper floors data, just turn that on, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I need to go down to around here. So upper floors is an interesting data set. So this, um, this is detailed shopping centre data. So if you're in a shopping centre and you see a floor plan and it's got the different levels and the different shops that are in each of these different levels, it's effectively that data in digital format. You can't use the feature information tool on this because we've got multiple levels here. But uh, what you can do is you can download this data and you can uh, uh, view it in a, in a GIS and you can see which which shops from different levels and, and analyze it that way. So, yeah, so that's an interesting data set. We've not had something like this before in DigiMap, so it'll be interesting to see what feedback people have on that. It also includes information on um, overhead power cable areas as well. So that's what these long, thin uh, orange sections are here. So this is the location of overhead power cables. But yeah, it's quite a, quite a unique data set. The final component of UK map that we've got visible in Pilot Rome is the tree canopy layer. Again, let's just zoom over to the common area. Zoom in a bit. So this is indicative tree canopy um, a layer. It's a polygon data set, so we've got the area of the tree canopy, uh, the indicative area of the tree canopy. <clears throat> it's not got trunk information, it's not got species information, it's not got height or anything like that. There's no other information, it's just a polygon data set that shows the indicative canopy of trees across London. So you see, there's obviously a lot of trees in London, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's very good, it's very detailed if you're interested in that sort of thing. There are two other components of the UK map data set. So there are digital surface models and digital terrain models, DSMs and DTMs for London as well. We've not exposed these through Pilot Rome. Uh, we don't we don't tend to view this this data through the Rome application, but you can download them through Pilot Download. So I'll show you those very briefly when we look at Pilot Download. Now, so that's all the Geomni data sets that we've covered there. Let's just zoom back out. If I go to the satellite data now, so the other section of data we've got is the satellite data. So we've got two flavors of this. We've got a natural color version. Let's just run the opacity up. And we've got a color infrared version. So these are, these are mosaics of satellite data, satellite images captured from the Copernicus Sentinel-2 mission. So part of the European Space Agency, there's a couple of satellites flying over the world all the time, taking images, and we've processed the data from 2019 to create these cloud-free mosaics. So it's very hard to get a cloud-free, single cloud-free image of, of Great Britain, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but we've processed the 2019 data to create these seamless cloud-free images. And I'm just going to zoom right in. So we're based out here up in Edinburgh, and you see it's reasonably detailed for satellite, you know, given the height that these, these things are flying. You can just about make out the castle here, and we've got Arthur's seat. Um, but yeah, it's obviously it's not as anywhere near as detailed as the aerial imagery. Uh, pixel size is around 20 meters, yes, 20 meter resolution. And in this color one, what we've done is we've processed bands three, four, and two. So in the receiver on the satellite, it, it captures data from lots of different bands, different wavelengths. We've processed the data from bands three, four, four, three, and two, which is red, green, and blue, to create this sort of true color image, natural color image of the of the surface of Britain. Now, the other variant of this we've got, I can say, is the color infrared version, which we turn on. It's much more colorful. So this this is again, it's the same data. It's the same 2019 data that we've mosaiced into this cloud free image. And this time we're using bands eight, four, and three. So that's eight near infrared, and then four and three red and green. So this is data that's uh, lots of people use this for analysing plant density and, and health and things like that. So looking at vegetation, um, vegetation characteristics of the ground. So yes, again, 
available for the whole country. 2019 data uh, would be really nice to know if, if people think this is a useful addition to the service. So there are the two collections of data that we've got in the pilot, uh, pilot Roam at the moment, pilot download as well. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, you may have noticed we've got this star rating system here. So this is how we're sort of looking to gauge feedback from users. Because we're interested to know how useful this data would be to you if we were to build it into the collection in Digimap and make it available permanently. So you'll see on this color of red one, I've given it a star rating of four. You can rate each data set in here. So it's a very simple process. You just expand the data set and say how useful it is to you. And you get a little notification to say it's been recorded. And we'll store this information. It gets recorded in the database, so we know how many people have rated it five stars, four stars, and so on. And we will happily anonymize and provide that information back to site reps at uh, institutions if they're looking to subscribe to uh, these new collections if they get created into new collections. So um, it would be really useful if you could encourage users, if they're looking at this data, just to give us a quick star rating. If it's something that's useful, to you, please let us know, and then we can, we can gauge demand and the usefulness of it from there. And oh yeah, another thing to know about this. So these these ratings are persistent. So if I rate this five stars and I come back tomorrow and go in here and actually determine it's not actually a five star, it's a four star, I can change it and that will be saved uh, as a sort of my updated rate. So you can go in there at any point as a user and set whatever rating you wish on each of these each of these products as appropriate. So yeah, if UK buildings is, is really useful, but UK land is not so useful, you can record it accordingly and then we'll know that this component isn't as useful as the other two. Okay, so really that's uh, Pilot Rome. Um, the other component of, of all of our collections is the downloader. If we just jump into Pilot Download, it's our standard download interface, and um, we've got the same selection tools uh, and our products listed down the left. So we've got our satellite data sets and our Geomni data sets, and again, on each of them we say when they're available too. So it's the same date as you see in, uh, in Pilot Rome. So you know when you can get this data from you. So a couple of things to note. Um, each data set has got a little pop-out that like you get in all of our, our Rome, oh, sorry, our data download applications, which has got the version information. So when was it published, scales, grid size in the case of rasters, and file formats, useful bits of information. And also the copyright. The copyright statements for these data are different because obviously they're from different suppliers, so um, we put them there to make it easy. And there's also the links back out to the official information pages from the data suppliers. So those pop-outs are really useful. I'll show you what formats and things that data is available in. The other thing that I wanted to point out was the availability grid. So the first one we looked at today was the UK buildings. So this is the one that's available, the building data for use and age information for the whole of Great Britain. We also looked at UK land, which is a raster data set, uh, so it's tiled, hence the, the grid display you can see there, but that also covers Northern Ireland. And then the third one we looked at was the UK map data, which is London only. So the availability grid shows you it's available for, for sort of greater London area. And that's the same for all the components of UK map. So the aerial bit, the tree canopy and upper floors is included in the UK map data there. And the other two components I mentioned were the DSM and the DTM, so the Digital Surface Model and Digital Frame Model, they're available to download through here. And then finally, just going back to the satellite, again, satellite data, it's raster data available for the whole of the UK, including Northern Ireland. These are really big files, so um, yeah, just be aware, if you, you can obviously take the whole country, but they are they are very big because they're very detailed and they've got lots of information, lots of values for the different bands that were collected from the satellite. So, yeah, the file sizes for these can be really, really quite large, so just something to be aware of. Okay, so yeah, that's really a run through of our two, um, two new applications in the pilot collection, so pilot roam, pilot download. Hopefully that's been useful to give you uh, a quick idea of the data that's in there and um, showing you how you can access it and how you can get hold of it. Just to finish off, just wanted to mention a few of the recent changes that we've done to the system. So I'll just run through these. 
First one is we recently added the Scottish Improvement Service data to the Ordnance Survey data download application. So the Scottish Improvement Service, they amalgamate data from the local authorities in Scotland and make it available centrally. And that data has now been added to Digimap. So lots of information that's captured at the local authority level uh, and published is now available in Digimap. So this, this simple map just shows polling districts and polling stations. So we did that at the last general election just to highlight that information. That's now available to be downloaded through, through Digimap. The geology data we recently made, one of the open data sets there available in geopackage format. So GPKG is geopackage. It's a very much a, a common, modern, open format that lots of data providers are now using because it's supported in all the major applications. And geology is very pretty as well, so it's nice to get a nice map there. The third thing I wanted to mention was regarding the points of interest data, which is available to download from the Orton Survey Collection. Previously, this was only available in CSV format, comma separated values format. We recently added the options to download this in file geodatabase and geopackage formats. These are two very common GIS formats now. It makes it a lot easier for users to use this data. Previously, with CSV data, you had to import it, then convert it to a point layer and, and do whatever representation you get. Now you can just pull in the file geodatabase or geopackage data into your GIS application. It will display it very nicely. So you just need to choose the format on the uh, on the basket after you've added the data to the basket. And the final thing I wanted to mention, which came in very recently actually, was that uh, now when you print um, overlays using the Ordnance Survey Roam application, any customizations you've done to those overlays will be respected in print files. Previously, the print files ignored any customizations, and this was especially annoying in the points of interest overlay because it's a really big data set, and you would you could customize your map to display just a particular type of feature, so be it accommodation or a restaurant, something like that. But then when you printed your map, you ended up with a map that had absolutely every point of interest displayed on it. So based on user feedback, we've actually sorted that out so that what you see on screen is now what you get in the print file, and it makes it a lot clearer for people. So thank you very much for coming along today. I hope it's been useful. And uh, please do have a look at the data and please do rate it so we, we feel for how useful it is. If you have any questions or comments about it, just get in touch with us via the usual channels. Uh, best thing is, is emailing digimap at ed.at.uk.